before we continue our discussion, let's take a short look at, look at a short report on this first. Analysts say surging bank loans have helped facilitate infrastructure investment and encourage private business investment. Our research shows that before April, most loans were used in government project investment. After April, private business investment has been increasing fast. We believe that such scale of credit will play a critical role in helping China shake off the impact of the financial crisis. But will the large credit trigger another inflation bubble after the economy recovers? We do notice the recent surge in property prices. That's caused mainly by market expectations of rising asset prices. But the Chinese tend to save rather than invest or spend, so inflation pressure in the future is limited. The government should definitely keep a close eye on the rising asset prices. Inflation was pretty bad in 1994, but now things are different. As China's economy is highly globalized, inflation is partly decided by overseas central bank policies. Experts say now is a critical time for the economy to recover. That means a relatively relaxed monetary policy has to continue. This in turn requires an eye on banks' bad debt risks. Zhang Junfeng, CCTV. Now we're in the studio with Professor Huo Deming from Peking University. Now, Professor, uh, we just heard the figure, 7.3 trillion yuan in new lending this first half of the year. Do you think that's too fast? Definitely it's too <laughs> fast for 7.3 trillion in compared with uh, the annual budget, which is uh, like 5 trillion. I would say half of the banks should close. They should go on holiday <laughs> because they finish their jobs. Now, of course, uh, this is what I call the engineering recoveries. That is too much policy interventions, but intervention, hopefully, it's on the good side. It's in the long term. I don't think the short-term intervention is going to last long. So if we think of in terms of long terms, the government should concentrate on more on things more on the fundamental side, not on this financial place. Okay, so you think there needs to be less lending, but do you think that will happen in the second half of this year? Do you think a monetary policy will be tightened? Uh, at least for the next three months, there will be no tightening in terms of monetary policy. There, I, I doubt that there's going to be a credit control. And uh, they might drop, uh, well, it's hard to say, but they might drop the uh, reserve ratio. It simply it's too high now. And raising interest rate, uh, it's not going to take too much effect. So uh, easy uh, monetary and fiscal policy is still on the road. Okay. Well, I would think uh, some would say that um, rapid growth in money supply will trigger inflation in the second half of the year, but today's figures show that both CPI and PPI are down from the same period last year, and experts seem fairly divided on this question, with some predicting inflation. Others are even forecasting deflation, and this is uh, clearly also a question of public concern. Before we continue our discussion further, let's take a look at this report. According to the chief economist of the National Bureau of Statistics, China's commodity prices will neither inflate nor deflate in the second half of the year. I don't think we can get rid of the overproduction problem in the short term, not this year at least. In this context, overproduction and insufficient demand will limit the possibilities of inflation. Over the first half of this year, the CPI experienced just one month of positive growth in January. The last five years saw continuous price drops. Yao says this will not lead to deflation. I would like to say deflation is not likely to occur either. Why? Please take note of the Chinese government's countermeasures to combat this challenge. These measures were aimed at keeping growth steady and expanding domestic demand. At the same time, they've also prevented deflation from happening. So as long as these measures are carried out firmly, deflation will not appear. Experts say that prices should be kept at a low and stable level this year so that people can be encouraged to consume more. Zhen Junfeng, CCTV. Now, uh, Professor Hua, uh, CPI, PPI figures dropped to 10-year lows um, in June 
what do you think of this continuous drop since the beginning of the year and what this might mean for you know, the everyday person? All right, this is definitely the right question. Simply, if you look at a CPI and PPI, that's exactly what you said. It's a, it's a very low. And in contrast with our GDP growth of 7.9%, that's a, that's a conflict. And that's what I call the engineer recovery, because just by market itself or by the, by the normal recovery, we should anticipate a higher CPI, which means it's probably negative 1% or negative uh, half percent, but now what we have is a negative 1.7%. So obviously there are policy interventions, and uh, well, I'm hoping that for the next uh, quarter, the CPI will, uh, say, go back to somewhere around 0%, simply because last year's the third quarter is the start of uh, financial crisis. Right. So we're starting from a very low base in terms of price level. Uh, what do you think of, of fourth quarter? And also for PPI, what's your expectation for PPI? <laughs> In the fourth quarter, we're going to see, well, we're probably going to see some inflation <laughs> pressure if we, starting from now, accumulate a lot of M M1 or M2. Mm -hmm. Remember that M1 or M2 growth rate now exceeds 20%. And that, if that lasts for the next uh, three to four months, uh, I'm expecting uh, uh, inflation coming, or coming inflation in, a, in, a, in the end, by the end of this year. Okay, okay, so inflation by the end of this year. Uh, and on that note, we need to take a short break right now, um, but let's review some of the key economic figures released today uh, before we continue our discussion further. Uh, now, Professor Hua, uh, during this morning's press conference, the NBS spokesman said the economic recovery is still not on very stable ground, the trends are not yet stable, and the pattern of recovery has not yet balanced out. What do you think of all these knots? <laughs> <laughs> I think of the eloquent way, which is the same thing as I, what I said, it's engineered recoveries. Uh, simply, if we look at the market, the trend is not there. But if you look at the policy, yes, we have a very strong uh, stimulus there. And so in terms of our official standpoint of view, and that's the best answer they can offer. And uh, I think we should look at what's the natural things. And uh, for China, it's always very hard to dissect whether it's natural or the policy part. Well, uh, let's... Uh get away from that question then and look at something a little mm -hmm. bit more positive for now. Uh, the real estate industry and the stock market both showed actually strong growth in the first mm -hmm. half of this year. Um, but some are actually worried that now it's going to turn into a bubble. We've got a lot of money coming into the system. What do you, th what do okay. you think? Okay. Uh, the stock market is not going to have a lot to do with GDP growth rates. So even if GDP grows to 8% or 6%, stock market will grow if the monetary factors are there. That is, if there's easy money falling from the skies, then certainly you're going to see a stock boom or the real estate uh, uh, booms. And for that, I predict the uh, stock market will have, uh, still have a good days ahead, at least for the next three months. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next three months are good. Is there anything, though, that you think the China needs to do, that the Chinese government can do to maintain and ensure that this, con this growth continues in the second half of this year? I think the best, the most important thing for Chinese government to to uh, keep an eye on is how what what's the real, the fundamental side of the economy, not on this policy intervention. So we need to we need to look at our employment numbers. We need to look at the productivities of of every industry, and we also need to address the issue that China versus the rest of the world, because that's going to affect in the long run how. Everybody grows. Now, this is a one-world economy. 
Right, right. One world economy. Um, I think uh, in this morning's uh, press conference, though, the NBS spokesman Li Xiaochao said that in the past, China specifically has usually faced a period of adjustment in times of economic crisis. Currently, it seems the government is taking advantage of this global economic downturn to update the nation's economic structure to make it a little bit stronger for everyone else as well. Let's take a look.